Hello, my name is John Spangle. Welcome to your YouTube channel. As I always explain my title, I was thinking about underground, uh, representing the church in present-day China and Iran and other places without praying the Holy Spirit expanding the body of Christ these last moments before we go up. I do believe in the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine taught by Jesus Christ himself and later by Paul, and that soon, the end of the church age, we're about to go up. We have understanding that no one knows the day or the hour. Jesus Christ himself said uh, 13 times in scripture, no one knows the day or the hour, no man, not the angels in heaven, not even the Son, but the Father only. So Jesus Christ, as man, he took on the persona as man, he, does, he did not know uh, when the rapture of the church will take place. A lot of people try to say, well, uh, you're being blasphemous, Christ knows everything. I understand that, but he allowed himself not to know the situation. So it's to have understanding. And so, what I try to do is, I love to talk about God. I've been doing videos for four years. I started uh, years ago for testimony for surviving my stage four cancer. And just to talk about God and how God's still done so much in my life. And even someone as simple as me, uh, try to understand the scriptures and, and study daily and, and come to things to know about God. A born again Christian uh, sees more that... that sees the truth, the person that's not born again does not. I'm going to go into this right here about a born again Christian. Uh, this is in regards to a statement someone had given the channel. And a lot of times I'll, I'll make videos off of comments uh, just because it it reinforces where I'm studying it at. Also, it's to give understandings. Sometimes it's to help, you know, it could help that person or if they're very, you know, they won't listen to what I have to say, but maybe someone else sees the comment or someone else on that train of thought to give understanding to them. But the comment I have here was, I don't see how anyone could put their faith in a man-made doctrine, once saved, always saved. A lot of times you see OSAS, that's what that stands for, once saved, always saved. When the Bible clearly states your crown can be stolen, names can be blotted out of the book of life, you can be vomited from Christ's mouth, and the Holy Spirit can be grieved and taken from anyone who has received him, who then rebels against God or commits willful sin. Hebrews 10, 26, where if we sin willfully, willfully after we have received the knowledge of truth, there is no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. The false doctrine of once saved, always saved, was specifically created by Satan in order to trick those people who believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. The many who don't believe in it were never included. So Satan will have another seven years to work on them because of deception that most believers are kept on earth. So... If you hear anything in the background, uh, my grandson is being dropped off. I'm going to take him outside. He's a fire starter. and I, I, I used to teach uh, survival training in the military. That's one of the things I did. And I'm, I'm showing him some camping skills. We'll be doing that this afternoon. So he's coming over. He's excited. I'm teaching him how to make fire. So uh, if you hear anything in the background, that's he's supposed to come in the house and, and be quiet as he comes in and sees his, his uncle waiting on him. Once we're saved, once you become a born-again Christian, no one can take you from God. You belong to God. That is scriptural. I'm about to show you in scripture. And I'm going to show you where it talks about, refer to the people that are, are uh, you know, those blotted out of the book of life. That is not us. That's the, not the born-again Christian. Pre-tribulation rapture doctrine, Jesus Christ taught it, and so did Paul. Uh, we know that the rapture takes place. No one knows the day or the hour. But we do know it takes place sometime before the seven-year tribulation. As we see things revving up, as we're told, understanding that uh, we'll go up uh, before the seven-year tribulation. That's for the unbelievers and bringing uh, the Jewish people back to obedience. I suggest read chap Daniel chapter 9. explains the whole reason for the seven-year tribulation. Yes, some Gentiles will come to God during that time, but those are people that have not heard the gospel. Right now, this time is, is we're expanding the body of Christ, trying to get people born again, but also trying to get people who hear the gospel and reject it to come to the gospel. Now, this person here that sent the statement, this is a broad statement, you can say, John, that you're incorrect to say that person may not be a born again Christian. Well, not really. That's fruits of our labor. If he doesn't understand the scriptures, he may be going through the process. Once you become a born again Christian, you have the milk of the scriptures. And later you have the meat of the scriptures, referred to by Jesus and by Paul. And so he may be born again, just a babe, not understanding, but he'll come to understanding. Maybe that's the reason why he's coming to this channel. 
If not, or he just may not be. He may be following the teachings of man. And so, we are in, we have to have discernment and understanding. And that's why I make these videos. That's why I got well over 500 very detailed videos at times of things. That, and go back and research on many things in Scripture. Have understanding. Since October of last year, Israel's been in the Psalm 83 war. I put this out to show us how close the rapture of the church is. When it talks about all the Iranian proxies, that ring of fire they say around Israel, that's attacking Israel. Israel's fighting for survival right now. The purpose of this war is to annihilate Israel. Everybody keeps talking about Ezekiel 38 war. That is later. That's to take a spoil. That is Iran, Russia, and Turkey, the main alliances. Iran has to build their military back up because they're going to lose the proxies right now. And that, that line that will take place, I believe, is mid-tribulation. I could be wrong on the timing, but I really think the war they talk about mid-tribulation is Ezekiel 38. They come to take the spoil. What's the spoil? What's going to be taken out of this war? This war that's taking place right now will lead into doing a lot of things. It will lead the Antichrist into uh, signing that covenant of many. And the promise that he will give them is that you'll get to build your third temple. I think that's the key how the Antichrist gets, gets them pulled in. So... As we look at things, we have understanding. When it talks about the ten main key players right now in the war that they're in, it talks about the tents of Edom. That's the descendants of Esau. I mean Esau. And that is modern day Palestinians in South Jordan. When it talks about the Ishmaelites, that's South Arabia, modern day South Arabia. When it talks about the Hagreans, it's modern day Egyptians. When it talks about Jabal, that's modern day Hezbollah in North Lebanon. When it talks about Ammon, that is modern day Palestinians in North Jordan. When it talks about Amalek, that's modern-day Sinai. When it talks about Philistia, that's modern-day Hamas of Gaza. When it talks about Terror, that's modern-day Hezbollah in South Lebanon. When it talks about Assyria, of course, it's modern-day Syria and North Iraq. And, of course, Moab is modern-day Palestinians and Central Jordan. These are all the key players in the main war that's taking place right now with Israel. Israel will win this war. Some things we can know... Uh, in God's Word and Scripture, we can look at things and have the truth on things. And some things we know, like like salvation. I'm, I'm a born-again Christian. It's what Jesus Christ did on the cross for me uh, and others. So, I'm going to heaven. This gentleman says, you, you cannot know you once saved or you saved. That's the teachings of man. To understand this, and to get more into this, I get into uh, what being born again is. Now, I do these things... From what I understand, where I'm at in Scripture, I'm a babe in Christ, I am learning. Sometimes I err. I don't think I err on this once saved, always saved. And so, and I'll show you in the Scripture, but I do this for you to study. I never do this for one thing. I'm not a preacher or a minister. That's not my calling. I, I'm not that high intellect, spiritually gifted for something like that. I just love to study God's Word. I love to talk about the true prayer preacher of and rapture of the church because we're in that time frame I see and it's it's being obedience to God why you do these things and have understanding uh, this is to give you information that you take on your own and study I have a web page rapturebelief.com I'm about to put some other writings on there I know I have to go back see if I've done the heresies I was going to put uh, heresies taught by the uh, Catholic Church Seventh Day Adventists Mormons some Church of God uh, some things about the charismatic churches and about uh, Jehovah Witness, if I said that, my mind, my brain. Jehovah Witness Mormons, Seventh-day Adventists, yes, uh, Catholic Church, Church of God, and some Church of Science, and some other churches. I'm going to put that stuff on there on, on the web page uh, soon, maybe later tonight. i got so much stuff going with grandkids right now and, and doctor visits. It's crazy. i got doctor visits every day next week. It's uh, lots been going on in my life. So, stand in faith to God. Soon we'll be called up. Hopefully it's real soon. My, my health is uh, progressing worse. But as I say, rapturebelief.com, I have all the information on there. I show the information of many raptures and scriptures. There are many. There's more than one. And uh, there's 13 that I found. And so I put in scriptures where they're at and what they're about to take and study and for you to see, I have this for you. I talk about a lot of things, about the John Darby lie. I've got a, a blog on there about that, showing exactly what Margaret McDonald, the 15-year-old Scottish lass, about the John Darby, you know, they lie and say, started by David McPherson, 
said that John Darby got this pre-tribulation rapture doctrine. It's only 200 years old, and that it started with John Darby. I've got the information on there. I've got information going back to 99 AD about Clement of Rome. I, Clement, who wrote a letter to the Corinthians that talked about pre-tribulation rapture. I talked about the Catholic Church, 431 AD, the Council of Ephesus, that they outlawed pre-tribulation rapture doctrine and martyred many uh, for because it was punishable under their death for teaching such things, even though it had been taught for over 400 years. And so understanding these things, how we understand is we study God's Word. The key is to be born again. If you're not a born again Christian, you're not going to understand anything. You have to be born again Christians, and it opens up because the Holy Ghost starts working in you in your studies. It's all about that personal walk. That daily walk is daily studying God's Word. And you become, because you have to understand the New Testament is written in Greek. Cone Greek. That's before classic. It was Cone Greek, classic Greek, Latin, and there's four kinds of English, like old, middle, late, modern, something like that for the English language. And so understanding of that, and understand that the Old Testament is written in Hebrew. And so it's not a Western book, especially here in the United States of America, people studying with the Western mindset. You've got to get away from that. Uh, you've been misled all your life in men's teachings, and you're looking at the Bible with the mindset of a Western person. You have to study the Middle Eastern culture. I know I, a lot of years I spent in the biblical archaeology of the Middle East and things like that to get an understanding. Of, and I've studied many different uh, religious you know, theologies and stuff because I love to study and see where things come out. I used to have a Quran here. I don't anymore. I had a Book of Mormon. These are things I've studied. It doesn't take away my faith. I know God. I'm just looking at these other things to study to see where they're at and where they come from. To understand, you know, misteachings and see where things come from. So, um, and if God bless me, if we're here much longer, next month actually I'm going back online to an area. I was doing some studies with uh, Yale University and some others that I'm able to maybe get back into that and get into more studies. And I think that helps me with videos and where I'm at with God and, and give me understanding of, of uh, man's religion plus looking at how things formed. I, I'm big into that. Uh, but uh, I just, God's everything to my life. And that's why I make these videos. So all the information's out there. I just got so much and it's just like over a place I try to bring in and show you. So let's understand what born again Christian is. This gentleman had said that, you know, once saved, always saved is not a lot. It's not true. Well, unfortunately, I have eternal salvation. Uh, those, those groups I just talked to you about, like Catholic Church and all that, they don't teach eternal salvation. And a lot of them teach salvation through works. Two things that are, that are not taught through scriptures, that's teachings of man. So Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, talking about being born again. And it says in uh, John chapter 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto ye, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb, and he be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I, I said unto you, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth, so every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Being the leader in Israel, he, you know, all the studies, he, would not, he did not understand this. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know, and testify that ye have seen, and ye receive not our witness. But if I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe it if I tell you of heavenly things? I stop right there. That's, that's so prevalent today. I show things online to people. And they, 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 a lot of times they come attack and mock and stuff. They don't see it. The people that get it to come here and make comments, getting it are the born, those that are born again. Those that are cannot see it. They cannot see the truth until they become born again. But you still show these things. Hopefully, because we're, we're born with a hole in our chest. You have a choice to fill it with the flesh or fill it with God. Yes, we don't work for our salvation, but you still have a choice. You have free will. And uh, that's something that and in the years I've been looking at, because I've had people say, well, we really don't have free will. We're predestined, predestiny. We're predestined as God knew where we were going to go. But at the same time, we're still given a choice because he didn't, as you say, make robots. He wants us to love us. 
you know, you have a choice where you're going to spend eternity in hell or heaven. I more I look and study, I realize God don't sin. I mean, He punishes us. Yes, when children do things wrong, we punish them. You know, so we are God's children. Uh, there's some things we get punished about. The Israelites right now they got to go through the seven year tribulation because of their disobedience. But heaven and hell is what Jesus Christ did on the cross. If you have faith, right now we have the gift of grace. It's just by believing on Jesus Christ and submitting. A lot of people don't explain or understand that. You have to submit yourself. Uh, and if I, my short-term memory, if I, as I'm speaking here, if I get to that point, hopefully the Lord will leave me now. I'll give that, get understanding to that, that verse. But uh, you have to submit to God. In other words, you have to give up the flesh. You have to give it all to God. I understand you're, I'm a wretched sinner, and it's what Jesus Christ did on the cross, and I fail daily, many times throughout the day, because I'm in this corruptible body. But it's what God did. It covers my past, present, and future sins. I'm not living sinfully. That doesn't mean I don't mess up and sin every now and then. But I'm not a life of sin. I'm a new creature. I am saved. A work in progress. Diamond in the rough. So, he goes on speaking. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even he, so much the Son of Man be lifted up. It talks about uh, Moses had the carving of the stick, stick with the serpent on the stake. He raised it up and they had to bow before it because during their disobedience in the wilderness, they were being bit by snakes <coughs> or asps. And they were dying from it. So they had to, to live, in order to live, they had to bow before that. And that represents later the cross. When Jesus Christ is on the cross, his, his feet bruises the head of the serpent. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have every eternal life. For God so loved the world that, that he gave only his begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Notice it says, through him. What he does, we're saved. And he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he had believed not in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because the deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. And so, uh, Jesus Christ came to bring us out of the world, not to save the world. And that's that's where we're at. Now, I know a lot of times, I just did a video yesterday, uh, talking about born again. I'll, I talk about it a lot, because without being a born again, you're lost. And then I try to give understanding. Some people had said some things about, well, you're going to be, there's going to be born again people in the seven year tribulation. I understand that in the seven year tribulation, many will come to know God. Uh, there's over 12 million Jews on the face of the earth who have come to have understanding, and there's some Gentiles that have not heard the gospel will have that opportunity. Everybody today, to this day, who've heard the gospel, I do this a lot, many times over, and I'll read to you in a minute in 2 Thessalonians chapter uh, 2, verses 10 through 12, in just a minute. Those left behind are damned who've heard the gospel and rejected before the set uh, before the rapture of the church, because they made their choice. And I'll show that right there in God's Word. Uh, but those left behind who have not heard the gospel, and the Jewish people will come to understanding of the, the true nature of Jesus Christ, they will have an opportunity. But many will be martyred, and they have to face a lot of horrendous things here on earth uh, to go. Whereas us, a born-again Christian, we're different. Uh, they become a new creature. Yes, they'll be born again. But they won't have the gift of grace. We have the gift of grace. They die, they'll be martyred. You know, they'll be, take the mark of the beast or don't take the mark of the beast. And they'll be hunted down and killed for not taking the mark of the beast. If they survive through the seven year tribulation, they go into the millennium kingdom. But us, we don't we don't have to be martyred. That doesn't mean through time that they've not been persecuted in the tribulation and Christians martyred. Exactly. Uh, over 6,000 people were, were killed last year in Africa alone 
martyred for Christians. I think I was around December of last year. Some villages were just totally wiped out. Genocide. Uh, it's ironic. These people in Africa talk about the genocide, and then they turn around and are fighting in the UN saying Israel's doing genocide against the Palestinians. Uh, Satan works wonders on this earth. Unfortunately, bad things. So let's get into understanding. Jesus Christ, Christ taught in parables. This man talked about people losing their salvation. I want to show where people can get those ideas from. But we understand the word of God, and so we see things different. Uh, the parables were not for the people of that time, and he'll refer to it here. We see in parables now. We understand the parables. The apostles... Uh, had Jesus to tell him the parables. Later he had the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit gives understanding of the parables. Talk about Jesus. And he spake many things them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground, and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who then hath the ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Jesus answered, he answered, speaking about Jesus, answered and said unto them, Because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even if they have. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing, see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. Uh, this is in the Greek, remember Hebrew, it's Elijah. Which saith, By hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see, and shall not perceive. So this is foretold well over 400 years before by Elijah. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their hearts, and should be converted, I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. So in other words, it's for those, the godly, not the ungodly. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye have seen, have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Hear therefore the parable of the sower. When any one heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and casteth away that which is sown in the heart. This is which he has received as my seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed in the stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and in on with joy received it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that receiveth seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world, the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he cometh unfruitful. But he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, and understandeth it, which was also bear fruit, and bringeth forth some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. That last verse is about the born again Christian. All these other people were not born again Christians. They were active in church, they did their thing. But it didn't take heart. Why? Because they truly didn't submit to God and become born again. Understand, he also talks about the tares among the wheat. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while he slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. When the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou not sow good seed in thy field, from whence hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Then we go and gather them up. But he said, Nay, lest while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. In the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye gather first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Now this is referring to the end of the seven year tribulation. You have both together, the believer and the unbeliever. But the uh, that's what takes place at the end of the seven-year tribulation. Understand there's many raptures. So at the end of the seven-year tribulation, it talks about like Revelation, uh, all of the discord, Revelation 24, 29 through 31, which I'm going to make in another video this week about that, going over that again. 
Uh, for some people, I've done this numerous times. I like to break things down to give understanding. There's many raptures in Scripture. 29 through 31 talks about at the end of tribulation when Jesus Christ comes down in all his glory and he sends out the angels to gather his elect. He's bringing everybody to Armageddon for what? Judgment. And that's the last rapture that takes place. We come down with him. That's Jude 14 and 15. We come down with Christ. He comes down with 10,000 of the saints. That's pre tribulation rapture saints. We come down with Christ. And as we're coming down, he talks about the martyred saints. That's when they come out. Um, let me just refer right here. Revelation 14, 14 through 16 is the martyred saints. Revelation 14, 17 through 20 is about our Armageddon. The martyred saints, the souls are in the altar. And so the souls come out as we come down. And they go, uh, the bodies come out of the graves. They get the glorified bodies. We come down on earth. And then God will send, I mean, Jesus sends out the angels to bring everybody to Armageddon <coughs> for judgment. A prime example of this is Philip, Acts chapter 8, verse 20. Uh, 24 to, uh, again, I apologize for my memory. Uh, Acts chapter 8, verse 26 through 40. As soon as Philip baptized the Ethiopian official, he was caught up in spirit, went over to Astos and started preaching. So you can be raptured from one location to another. And so that's what's going to take place at the end of the seven-year tribulation. People listen to men's teaching and get things twisted, and that's the reason why a lot of times they're like, well, that's us. We're raptured up. The wheats and tares. No, we're in heaven. The wheats and tares are for the unbelievers and believers at the end of the seven-year tribulation. We're not part of that group. We're, we're at towards the end of the church age. We're about to go up. Amos chapter 8, verses 11 through 12, talks about a time in the future when God will send a famine on the earth. A famine not of food and water, but a famine of not finding the scripture. Why? Because the church is gone. That's the time of chaos that the Antichrist comes out. When he gets into... Uh, he confirms the covenant with many and starts the seven-year tribulation. The church goes up. Once the church goes up, the Antichrist gives power to... I'm, I'm sorry. Satan gives power to the Antichrist because Satan comes up and the war in heaven starts and finishes. Michael beats Satan. Mid-tribulation, Satan's cast down to earth. That's the reason why he indwells into the, holy, um, into the Antichrist and he goes into the temple make himself God here on earth. He's lost heaven, and he knows he has a short period of time. So I have understanding. Uh, when we look at Revelation 4, chapter 4, it says, It ran about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. These are men out of the tribulation saints. After the seven, I mean, after, uh, tribulation saints, I apologize. Uh, these are elders out of the raptured church. I'm looking at my notes here. The elders are four, 24 men. We do not know who they are. They're, they're wearing the white that represents uh, what we wear, that represents Jesus Christ's uh, testimony for what he did for us. And they have crowns of gold. The crowns of gold reference a lot of times is what Paul talked about. No, let no one, He talks about uh, he fought the good fight and gets this crown that he's been, uh, the crown of righteousness that he gets and, and we get too. Why? Because we anxiously wait uh, of the rapture of the church. We have this in Revelation 3, 10, and 11. And Jesus promised, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. He keeps us out of the seven-year tribulation. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast. In other words, when he comes in the clouds, it's quick. It's the twinkling of the eye. That no man take thy crown. That crown he refers to is the crown of righteousness. And this gentleman was talking about your crown being taken. Yes, there's, there's many crowns we make, and many crowns can be taken. Uh, but what it refers to is, is those people that, if you listen to man's teachings, you're not going to go up in the seven-year tribulation. If you listen to man's teachings, you're not going to go up in the rapture of the church. I'm sorry, it's been a long day, and, and uh, not feeling well. You will not go up in the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. You will be here for the seven-year tribulation. And so, you don't get your crown of righteousness. So you've let them take your crown away. Why? Because of your unbelief. The whole reason I do this, and I know I seem in a hurry, there's a lot going on, I'm trying to do this, is because our time is short. Uh, I had someone comment, I, I call, it was either this morning or last night, I do not know when I did that video. Uh, my memory, I'm that tired. 
But a person made a comment that I've been speaking for a whole year now about the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. It's not happened yet. That's right. It may happen now. It may happen tomorrow. It may happen next week or next year. I do not know when it's going to happen. I've been looking at different things. I used to get into the high watch times, but the more I study, the more I realized that's not the way to be. We are to look at it as uh, uh, children of God that it's imminent any time. That's what Paul taught. That's the reason why he wrote First and Second Thessalonians. He preached at Thessalonica for six, three to six months, and as soon as he left, as soon as he left, they started going there talking about how they thought the rapture had already taken place and people missed it. That's the whole reason for Second Thessalonians chapter two verses one through seventeen. It's because they taught that they missed it. And it explains how the church will be raptured up because we have the indwelling of the Holy Ghost that's holding back the Antichrist. And the Antichrist will uh, gets his power from Satan. Well, uh, uh, and it also describes that when we come down, second coming, Christ comes on earth, the Antichrist is immediately uh, destroyed. But the reason I do all this is verses 10 through 12. And I stress this so much to people, I do it in most of my videos, that's because people don't see it, so I just present this out to them. And it states about those left behind. And with all deceitfulness of unrighteousness in them that perish. They perish, why? Because they perceive not the love of truth that they might be saved. That's the gospel truth. They didn't believe on Jesus, what he did on the cross. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. What's the lie? That the pre-tribulation rapture of the church, you know, all these people are missing, but that has nothing to do with the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. Because if they realized what it was, then they would come to God. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Those people are damned because they're living on earth unrighteous. And so therefore, they don't accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. And because of that, they're not allowed salvation. As I say many times, as there's many people say in the seven-year tribulation come out of the seven-year tribulation, a group of the 12 million Jews and some Gentiles have not heard the gospel, have an opportunity to come out of that. But even out of that, it's, it's a, we don't know what the number is. And it's a, so large of a number, man cannot count. But that doesn't, you know, millions of people, yes. Well, just a third of, of 12 million is, is 4 million. So, we don't know how many comes out of that. We know it's a large group. And so, uh, we will be reigning over these with Christ, over these people. We'll be in pr uh, positions over these people. And, uh, as Pre-tribulation rapture saints have understanding of that. But once you're saved, you are always saved. Nobody can pluck you out of God's hand. It says in Scripture, and I did not put that in there. I knew I was missing something. I forgot to put the Scripture that states that. Uh, I apologize. It take me forever to look it up. But it talks about how uh, no one can pluck, pluck us out of the Father's hand. Uh, so once you're saved, you're always saved. Now, that's not the teaching of the man. That's what Jesus Christ taught himself. That's what he promised to us. He's our shepherd. We are his sheep. And we are protected by him. And so that's that's why I do that. And that's why I did this video. To have understanding of God's word. To know that soon we are about to go up. And I was wanting to refer to one last thing before I go. Because uh, a lot of times in the Bible, this gentleman was talking about how, you know, you can lose your salvation. No, you don't lose your salvation. You never had it in the first place. I just gave you the parable of the sower, and uh, in that parable, you know, it talks about um, how you, you cannot lose your salvation. For those that seem that to, to lose their salvation, let's go to Matthew 7, 22-23. When Jesus Christ says, you men of iniquity, go, come, go away from me, he shuts the door on them. Uh, in Matthew 7, 23, it says a person can pray to Jesus and not be saved. A person can prophesy in Jesus' name and not be saved. A person can do wonderful works in Jesus' name and not be saved. So they seem to be saved, but they're not. Why? Because they don't do the will of the Father. At John chapter 2, 23 through 25, a person can even believe on Jesus' name and not be saved. And the reason for that was the people in John 2, 23 through 25 were not saved. It's because they did not believe on Jesus as their Lord and Savior from sin, but as a ruling Messiah who would feed them and rescue them from their political enemies. So I have an understanding of this. Uh, when you look at Scripture and understand these things, that's the reason why these people seem like, well, they're saved and they lost their salvation. They never had their salvation because they weren't born-again Christians. And so understanding of that, that once you become a born-again Christian, you're a new creature, you belong to God. does not mean we don't falter and uh, don't make mistakes. 
but that's why Jesus Christ was the perfect sacrifice for us. And by those that by saying that we're going to go through a seven year tribulation and we're going to be here for all that, you're denying Jesus Christ coming for his bride. Not only that, you're saying what Jesus Christ did on the cross was not perfect. And they have understanding of that. That's the reason why that's the teachings of man, not of God. I stress that so much to people. Uh, because uh, it's, it's basically you're saying what Jesus Christ did was not complete. And so, uh, and exactly what he did on the cross was very much complete for us. And without that, without his great love, we would not be saved. I'm nothing but a wretched sinner. I fail. I may do good for a short period of time, but I fail. I'd be good for a while, then I fail. I always fail. But I have the eternal security. We all do. Once to become a born-again Christian. That's not the teachings of man. That's the teachings of God. Thank you.